Hi everyone, my name is Florin and I work at JetBrains as a developer advocate. In today's video, I would like to show you how run targets work in Goland 2020.1. Run targets is the latest feature in 2020.1 and it allows you to use Docker containers, WSL2 environments, or remote servers using SSH connections to compile and run your code. It works for debugging too, and you can also run tests even with coverage. And we'll cover all of these in today's video, but only for Docker containers. If you'd like to see how this works against WSL2 or Windows Subsystem for Linux, then feel free to watch our channel and we'll publish another video uh, as a follow-up for that feature alone. For now, let's jump into the code. In this particular piece of code, what we have is a, a simple web server which runs on port 38000 and it tries to reply to the user with a few basic information. This is the uh, operating system that the uh, application is running on, the architecture, and whether it's running inside the Docker container or not. Now, the detection itself is simplistic to say the least, but it's useful for the example. I'm running on Windows, so let's see how this works on my machine. The results may be a bit different on you based on your operating system. So I compile the application, and if I unhide the four Go setup lines here, you see that I'm running against Go 116.2, so it's a bit outdated as Go 116.3 was released yesterday, at the time of recording this video, of course. And I am compiling against a Windows path running a Windows binary. To quickly check the output of our application, let's quickly go to the to the root folder and select the check HTTP file from here. Now I can uh, use the same shortcut to run this request and I will see that I am running using the Apache HTTP client. So that's Goland itself. I am running in Indo on Windows and I am outside of a container. So not exactly where we want to, to run this. We want Docker. Let me hide this. And uh, actually let's stop the application from running too so that it frees up the port. Now, how can we make our application run on Docker? Well, enter the run target. Click on the run option here at the top of your IDE and select manage targets. Of course, you can use keyboard throughout this workflow, but I'm going to show it with the mouse. Here, we can select either the existing targets or we can create new ones, such as a WSL2 run target, an SSH one, or Docker, the one that's interesting for us for this video. Now, we can see that the language runtime is Go because we are interested in running a Go application. We want to select the Docker server uh, that is most appropriate for us. In my case, this is configured to use the local uh, Docker for Windows one, but you can also add new Docker uh, servers as needed. And then you have a couple of choices. Uh, the first one is the image choice. Here, you can either build an image based on your existing Docker files. So for example, I can come here and select the Docker files in my project or I can come here and select pool. The pool configuration will allow you to pull images from different Docker registries. So it depends on you how you want to use this feature. For now, let me search for the Go image in the registry since we are already here. And let's see what's the latest Go version that we can pull. I think it is Go 116.3, right? So, yeah, that's it. I used completion throughout this process and I can use completion here too. So for example, I can specify the port that the application is running. And now I could say, okay, I'm running against port 38,000 and I want to map it inside the container using the port 38,000. Cool, all of this being done, we can click on the next button and skip to the second step. 
Normally, this will do two things. First, you'll see that it's going to pull the image from the registry. And second, it's doing some introspection to figure out different environment variables, as well as other uh, tools that may be needed to run our container smoothly. Let's click on the next button and finally have an overview of our configuration here. We can double check that everything is detected as needed, or we can even add other languages runtimes, specifically other Go versions, in case our container contains several of these. Let's click on the finish button and observe that we've created this run target with all the parameters that need, are needed. We can also choose to rebuild the image in case we want to update it, for example. Let's click on the OK button for now. How do we change our run target now so that we can target Docker? This is surely not enough, right? We can click again on the run button here and this time around choose modify run configuration. By default, you'll see that run on is set to the local machine, which is your uh, host machine, right? But you can also see that now we have a uh, run target. It's the one that we created earlier or create new ones. You can choose to manage targets too, so you can bring back the pop-up that we have here and add, delete, duplicate, and so on and so forth as needed. For now, I'm going to choose the uh, Go configuration uh, we created earlier using a container. And now you'll see that the configuration changed ever so slightly. We can do a build on remote target now, which was not there before. And this allows us to take the application and compile it on the container itself. Then we have the run after build option, which allows you to basically run after build, right? So we want to do that. You can uncheck it, of course, if you just want this run configuration to serve as a building only option to make sure that your application, for example, still compiles after a large refactoring. I'm going to skip the other options for now because they work similarly as with um, running on a local machine. So you could, for example, uh, pass different compiler values here, different environment variables to the compiler or to the application itself and so on and so forth. Cool. After this is done, now let's run the application again, right? So again, all of this could be done with the keyboard, I'm choosing the mouse for now. Now, if I expand this again, I can see that some changes were applied. So the go root is now different, go path is different, and the actual command that was used to compile and run my application are different too. I can see that this is a Linux binary as well as a Linux path already. Okay, so how do we know that this is running as we want? Well, let's go back to our HTTP check file, right? And if I run this again, it says, hey, I'm running against Linux on an AMD64 architecture inside of a container. So we achieved what we wanted. If I scroll down through the list of all the uh, containers that we have here, I can see that the container is up and running and well, everything is passed down. So for example, the go uh, modules variable was passed by the compiler and so on. And I can browse the files as needed. What about having a, a feature to do testing, right? I said that you can also uh, do tests. Let me stop this container up for a bit, which will also stop our application and switch back to the main uh, test file, right? So this is a simple test. And again, it's here for uh, demonstration purposes only. And let me run this. Now, by default, if I were to run this, I would run it against the local machine. So I can choose to modify the run configuration and say, choose the Go uh, Docker container. Now. When I click run, it's going to run against my container. And it seems that test is failing for some reason. Let me see. So what would be the condition? Maybe it's something else. Let's debug this. I said we can also do debugging, right? 
So let's launch this with the debugger. And the debugger feature will also work for the application, not just for the test itself. And perhaps set the breakpoint here. Now that the uh, debugger is up and running, let me expand this for a bit. We can start using the regular uh, commands to step through the code and see what is happening. So it seems we don't have any errors so far, but this condition looks a bit uh, strange. If I were to uh, jump to the last error that we have here, I can see that there's a typo and I could fix it. Okay, so let's rerun this and uh, see once again what happens now. Well, I'm running again, compiling, everything is fine, and I skipped over the condition itself. So, yay, everything should be fine, right? Perfect, everything was good. Another thing that I promised that I'll show you is the fact that we can run in containers using coverage. So it is as simple as simply running here. And as you can see, we've got the coverage. Everything is um, more or less covered by our single test. Of course, the condition to not run in the container is not present yet, but otherwise everything looks good. So how do I know that everything was running against the container and maybe wondering? Well, if I were to expand the setup calls here, I would see that this command reflects a, a Linux path, whereas the build command reflects the Windows path. And that's another feature that you can benefit from. You can use the cross compilation feature to build on your machine and just run in the container. This depends, of course, if your code uses Cgo or has any other dependencies that may not be able to uh, otherwise compile on uh, Windows itself. Would you like the test to run and compile against uh, the container itself? Then no worries. You can again select the build on remote target from the run configuration. And that will ensure that everything works as expected. Let me run this this time around without a uh, coverage because it's not needed. And yeah, after running the test, expand this and we see that, hey, this is running as expected with the compiler inside the Docker container. That is it for today. Thank you for, um, for watching and I hope you'll find this feature useful in your day-to-day -day development. Please don't forget to leave us your feedback down in the comments section below or reach out on our social media or write to us on Gophers Slack or our issue tracker. Once again, I am Florin from JetBrains and thank you for watching.